Martha Rogers, Science of Unitary Human Being Presented to you by Julius Babula, Malachi Galicia, Manami Peters, and Luby Ann Ray Ramos. Life and Works of Martha Rogers Born on May 12, 1914 in Dallas, Texas, she started her nursing education with a diploma in 1936 from Knoxville General Hospital School of Nursing, followed by a bachelor's degree in 1937 from George Peabody College in Nashville, Tennessee, a master of arts degree in 1945 in public health nursing supervision from Teachers College, Columbia University, New York, a master of public health in 1952, and a doctor of science in 1954 from Johns Hopkins University, Baltimore. After her nursing career in rural public health nursing, where she established a visiting nurse service of Phoenix, Arizona, then moved into teaching from 1954 to 1975. She was a professor and head of the Division of Nursing at New York University. From 1979 to 1994, she held the title as a professor of emerita and died on March 13, 1994. She published three books, more than 200 articles, lectured in 46 states across the globe. In 1988, she formed the Society of Rogerian Scholars and published Nursing Science News. She received awards for her contribution and leadership in nursing. From 1995, the New York University houses the Martha Rogers Center for the Study of Nursing Science. Her theory stems from multiple disciplines such as anthropology, psychology, sociology, philosophy, physics, to name a few, which culminated to the creation of the theory of unitary human beings, with the environment as an issue field's integral life process. In 1970, she published the conceptual model as an introduction to the theoretical basis of nursing. As an original thinker, she synthesized and re-synthesized nursing knowledge into a new system of thought. Her theory can be traced to nothing else framework of human's relation with the environment. Let's talk about the major concept of her theory. Let's get started. The process of a person's life, as described by Martha Rogers, is characterized by wholeness, openness, and directionality, pattern and organization, sentience, and thought. She said that human beings have energy fields that is integral with environmental field. This is what we call hemodynamics. These fields are identified by pattern and characterized by universe of open system. From these ideas, she postulated four building blocks of her theory, the energy field, the universe of open system, the pattern, and the pan dimensionality. Let's start with energy field. This is the fundamental unit of living and non-living. It is infinite and non-linear. Rogers identified two energy fields, and those are human field and environmental field. The human field is identified with pattern, and its characteristic is manifested as a whole rather than a part. So we look at a person as a whole being rather than each part of it. Environmental fields also do have pattern, but they are integrated with the human field. Together, these two energy fields have the ability to create change. When they do create change, they do it together, and they do it continuously. Second, the universe of open system. It gives the concept that the energy field is infinite that it is open and that it's integrated with one another. Next is pattern, which is the distinguishing characteristic of two energy fields. It is abstract and have variety. Each person have unique abstract pattern with unique variation. It changes continuously. Once it changes, the characteristic of human field changes too, and so the environmental field. The last one is pan-dimensionality, which defines as infinite domain without limit, and it expresses the idea of a whole as one and unified. In certain situation, energy field is calm, but in disruptive one, energy field is disturbed. Principles of hemodynamics are helices, 
Resonancy, Integrality. Fundamental Ideas and Major Theoretical Concepts of Science of Unitary Human Being. In 1970, there are five basic assumptions that Martha Rogers identified that underlay her conceptual framework. Wholeness, openness, unidirectionality, pattern and organization, sentience, and thought. First is wholeness. According to Rogers, man is a unified whole possessing his own integrity and manifesting characteristics more than and different from the sum of his parts. Second is openness. Rogers stated that man and environment are continuously exchanging matter and energy with one another. Third is unidirectionality. Rogers believed that life process evolves irreversibly and unidirectionally along the space-time continuum, from birth to death. Martha Rogers asserts that pattern and organization identify man and reflect his innovative wholeness. Sentience and thought, which was defined by Martha Rogers as man is characterized by capacity for abstraction and imagery, language and thought, sensation and emotion. Martha Rogers' conceptual framework can be analyzed using the meta-paradigm of nursing, person, environment, health, and nursing. Unitary human being for Rogers refers to an irreducible, indivisible, pan-dimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristics that are specific to the whole and which cannot be predicted from knowledge of the parts. Rogers asserts that environment is an energy field including everything that is not the person which constantly interacting with the human field. Rogers believed that health and illness emerges from continuous pattern of manifestations of the human and environmental fields. The goal of nursing related to the theory of Rogers is to promote human environment field patterning. The patient defines what is health for them while the nurse assists the patient to achieve that goal. Next, let's talk about the relationship with 21st century nursing practice. Nursing practice can be anywhere there are people. As Rogers predicted, nursing practice is becoming primarily in the community. This is expanding the area of practice to places such as homeless shelters, single room occupancy hotels, and various agencies for people of all ages. Nurses can work with all living things and the environment such as animals, trees, and plants. Rogers pointed out the relationship between the patient and their environment, perceiving the person as a whole, including their environment. Rogers' theory provides a framework that is implemented using the practice methodologies to determine how to deliver care. The methodology directs the interpretation of her conceptual theory to fit the unique situations of individuals in nursing practice. Applying Rogers' concept, pattern manifestation appraisal and deliberative mutual patterning into practice allow nurses to identify manifestations of human and environment field that relate to health events and the nurse and patient to adjust the field they identified. Therapeutic procedures such as therapeutic touch and healing touch Therapeutic touch as a modality that related to her views. Healing touch as an energy-based holistic modality, both of which are as effective tool to reduce anxiety and pain level of patients. Health teaching is essential part of today's nursing practice. In the voluntary mutual patani, sharing knowledge through health education allows patients to choose their own health patani approaches. Nurses aid patients to make educated decisions about their own health and well-being. 21st century healthcare has faced many challenges, some listed here. Rogers' framework enables nurses to utilize their imagination to create a wonderful way to resolve the difficulties of healthcare environment. Rogers' theory also encourages self-reflection. In today's healthcare system, this is needed to establish a healthy, holistic environment for nurses. Nursing labs in the future will be realistic, using artificial intelligence and virtual reality, and can be structured using the unitary frame of reference, revolutionizing teaching technical aspects of care.
The current dilemma of the nursing shortage and declining enrollment is perhaps due to a de emphasis on theory. Roger's theory may help to reverse this trend and subsequently increase the nurse population. Case presentation The story of Mrs. S. Mrs. S is a 47 year old female, widowed for three years now. She has two children, Chris, age 13, and Anita, age years old. She is living in a subsidized house with her children. She works as a cashier at a grocery store. Mrs. S has history of hypertension and chronic kidney disease and was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease two months ago. She was referred to a nephrologist for assessment and advised to undergo hemodialysis treatment three times per week. Mrs. S is in pre-hemodialysis program and is on a waiting schedule for hemodialysis temporary line insertion. She is taking maintenance medication for her hypertension. Mrs. S has no private insurance, her low income which results in poor choice of food, hence, she is unable to comply with her diet restriction. Mrs. S has not been sleeping well during the night and losing her appetite. She has been concerned on how can she provide for her kids when she starts her hemodialysis. One day, Mrs. S was admitted from emergency department for general weakness and shortness of breath. Patient is scheduled to see the nephrologist for further evaluation before starting the scheduled hemodialysis treatment next week. During the nurse's rounds, the nurse noticed that the patient seems restless in bed. When approached by the nurse, Mrs. S voiced out her concern regarding her hemodialysis program. Patient stated she is scared of hemodialysis treatment and is now not sure if she wants to continue with the program. She is insisting to be discharged. She said that her cousin had end-stage renal disease, and when he started hemodialysis, he became weaker and died after two months on hemodialysis. There are three identified nursing process in Martha Rogers' theory of science of unitary human being. The pattern of appraisal, the mutual patterning, and the evaluation. According to Alligood, pattern of appraisal is a comprehensive assessment that incorporates cognitive input, sensory input, intuition, and language. Rogers' theory focuses on the manifestation that occur from the mutual or environmental force pattern that reflects the whole. It begins with obtaining the patient's description of experience with the disease, her perception of her health, and how the disease is expressed or the symptoms. The nurse helps the patient identify the change in pattern of human and environmental fields of communication, exchange, rhythm, dissonance, and harmony. Information such as what is showing become integral with pattern appraisal. The five senses help gather information and promote holistic pattern appraisal. The nurse validates with the patient then identified pattern of perceivable rhythms like what you see here as an example. Next is mutual patterning, where the nurse goal is to transform the human or environmental field patterning. The nurse facilitates and mutually ex explore with the patient the options and choices on how they want to participate in their own change process. The nurse provides information and resources which promotes patient's awareness, in which the patient has the freedom to make informed decisions regarded with her health and well-being. Here are the examples of nursing intervention that enables mutual patterning. Here, you can find additional modalities that promote mutual patterning as well. Lastly, evaluation, which is, according to Alligood, is ongoing and simultaneous with appraisal and patterning as long as there is a nurse-client relationship. The nurse gives specific emphasis on evaluation emergent patterns of dissonance or harmony from the human environmental field that are evident. Regardless of which mutual patterning is used, 
the intent of the nurse evaluation is for the patient to actualize her potential to relate to her well-being and betterment. Mrs. S's routine lifestyle and environment impacted her health as a unitary being. According to Ali Good, during episodes of bowing resonancy, the human environment field manifestations may be perceived as non-harmonic and unsettling to the person, thus the person may view himself or herself as out of harmony or ill. A nurse practicing based on larger science of unitary human beings would first identify patterns of manifestations. This nurse would help Ms. S engage in the pattern appraisal process to obtain her experiences, perceptions, and concerns about general weakness, shortness of breath, and anxiety. Roger's model of pattern appraisal suggests that the patient reflects upon her personal patterns and on the patterns of those with whom she shares life. Ms. S has been raising her children alone for three years. During this appraisal, the nurse seeks to discover the patient's goal. According to Arlegut, providing care within the Rogerian model emphasizes the self-articulation of personal pattern manifestations and self-knowledge. Obtaining patient history is also integral to the pattern appraisal. Ms. S has been living in a subsidized house. Her income is insufficient for her family's needs, leading to an unhealthy diet. Obtaining vital signs, laboratory, and diagnostic reports are vital. Assessment of rhythm of pain and discomfort and areas of patient concern are also essential. Pain and discomfort alter a human's energy field. Through specific questions, the nurse will assess if Ms. S has experienced a change in her sleep patterns and nutritional intake. The recent diagnosis of end-stage renal disease created a dissonance in the energy field of the patient. This is characterized by changes in her sleep-wake cycle and nutrition. She became anxious about how she could provide for her family if she begins hemodialysis treatment. Dissonance is manifested by her acknowledgement of fear and anxiety regarding her future. The human energy field pattern is integrated with the environment field pattern in this theory. Rogers asserts that the unitary human being and environment are intertwined. The restlessness of the patient while in the hospital was evidence of dissonance between the human and her environment. After the pattern appraisal, the nurse can identify Ms. S. goal. This will guide the nurse and patient to achieve maximum health potential through mutual patterning. The identified goals of Ms. S. are listed here. Next, we will proceed to the next process, the mutual patterning. The concept of unitary human being and holistic approach offer opportunities for nurses to design and implement innovative healing environments. As asserted by Barrett, under mutual patterning modalities, the nurse should promote meaningful dialogue, centering, and pandimensional authenticity. Pandimensional authenticity includes genuineness, trustworthiness, acceptance, and knowledgeable caring. Mutual patterning emerges from pattern appraisal and relates to areas of mutual emerging goals. In this process, the nurse summarizes her understanding about patient's perception. Mutual patterning involves sharing knowledge and offering choices to Mrs. S. Personal knowledge of Mrs. S. about available treatment modalities enables possession of freedom and involvement in the selection of modalities. Possible options include therapeutic touch, meditation, visualization, imagery, music, light, humor, journaling, art, and photographs. Application of Rogerian theory involves other healthcare providers, as well as the family in patterning to address the unitary human being. The nurse can refer Mrs. S to the social worker to address her financial needs, concerns about caring for her children, and connect her to the available community resources. A patient with end-stage renal disease must monitor the amounts of fluid and certain nutrients that must be taken in each day. In this case, dietary referral will be beneficial to Mrs. S in considering her food preferences. 
the nurses introduces the process of touch to Mrs. S's children and teaches them how to incorporate touch during interaction with their mother. Therapeutic touch would only be an option if the patient feels safe being touched. In the presence of pain and discomfort, the nurse can teach Mrs. S on how to center and channel her energy to the affected area. Patterning directed to her anxiety of hemodialysis should be introduced. The nurse can teach the patient about hemodialysis, which can promote better understanding of the treatment. According to Rogers, the goal of nursing is promoting symphonic rhythms of the human and environmental field. While in the hospital, the nurse should provide a calm environment which patterns the environmental field to promote harmony related to the health event. Options that include music, light, humor, and journaling can be discussed. Bringing photographs and artwork of her children to decorate her room while in the hospital will help create energy and optimism. It can help Mrs. S to redirect negative thoughts and provide comfort for the soul. These non-invasive patterning modalities can promote a rhythm that is harmonious with Mrs. S and her energy field. Possible outcomes are nursing diagnosis, interventions, the nurse will identify and acknowledge patient's perception of the situation and awareness of anxiety, use presence and demand to encourage patient's verbalization of feelings, assess patient's knowledge and familiarity regarding hemodialysis, respond to her concerns by providing and reinforcing information as needed, steadily visit the hemodialysis department to promote awareness of the environment, lessen stimuli by providing a quiet environment, Assist the client to divert the energy of anxiety towards coping strategies. Explain and obtain consent for therapeutic touch to facilitate rhythmic flow of energy. Assist the client to develop new anxiety-reducing skills such as recognition of triggers, relaxation, deep breathing, positive visualization, reassuring self-statements, and providing music therapy of choice.